In her book, she describes racism for most white people um, as a passive process. Okay? Like nobody's out there trying to be racist. People are just living their lives, right? They're, they're going to work, they're sending their kids to school, they're active in their communities, but they're doing it on a conveyor belt that's just moving inexorably through racism and toward racism. I want to take that image of racism as basically a passive process, life on a conveyor belt, and expand on that image to talk about how we become actively anti-racist. So here we are. We're on our conveyor belt, going to work, going to school, training our people, all of that, right? And we're, we don't even realize we're in a conveyor belt. We're just moving actually over the bodies of other people. That's how it works, right? But, and and we're, we're unaware, even though there's a big sign up here that's racism, 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 because most of us are so involved in our lives, we don't even look up at the sign. Or maybe we look up and we're like, oh, racism. And then we close our eyes because we're in denial and we keep on the conveyor belt. Or maybe we see racism and we turn around, but that's all we do. So maybe we're colorblind, but we're still being swept along in this conveyor belt, right? I'm going to suggest that here we are on this conveyor belt, but now, maybe today, maybe this morning, something got through and it was like racism, right? What we need to do is we need to turn around, but we don't want to just keep getting swept up. We need to start walking, right? We need to take a step. We need to keep walking faster and faster, at least as fast as the conveyor belt is moving, just to stay in the same place. We have to become actively anti-racist, right? But let me ask you this, what happens when you are walking backwards on a crowded conveyor belt, you start bumping into people and it becomes uncomfortable for them and uncomfortable for you. And they're like, hey buddy, watch out, where are you going? Which is your chance to do the first of three tasks to being actively anti-racist, which is to name racism, to say, do you see where we're going? Do you want to go there? Or do you want to turn around with me? Now, most people do not want to be disturbed out of their comfort. So they'll say, just leave me alone. But maybe one or two will turn. So now you're two or three of you walking backwards on this conveyor belt, you keep bumping into people, and you keep naming racism, and you keep inviting people to turn, and you'll never get 50%, so don't even hold out for that. But more and more, <laughs> <laughs> so now you're building up like a critical mass. So now, not only can you not just stay in the same place, you can start moving this way, not only away from the sign that says racism, but you're trying to get to the motor that is making this system work, right? So now we're here at the motor. So this is the second of two stages of being actively anti-racist, which is to ask the question, how is racism operating here? Looking at structures, policies, practices, norms, and values, the who, what, when, where, how, and why of decision making. So I think it's this lever. So I'm going to pull on the lever. And the whole system starts shaking, and I've done it, I've done it. Except racism is a very fancy system, and it reconfigures itself, and it keeps on going. Which talks about the importance of the third stage of being actively anti-racist, which is to organize and strategize to act. So that as I'm pulling on this lever, you need to push your button. You need to pull on that pulley. You need to swing that pendulum. And all of us need to take a piece of this system. Because I really do believe that all of us working together can dismantle this system and put in its place a system in which all people can know and develop to their full potential. As the most political medical specialty, here you go, it's all right. <laughs>